and introduce you? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> we'll try not to embarrass you too much. He will. He will. Uh, well, let's uh, uh, open Sunday school uh, together and pray. And then uh, got a hymn selected this morning, In the Garden, which would be number 97. I think we'll sing a couple of those, a uh, couple verses there. Whatever, whatever two Brother Kurt chooses uh, for us in In the Garden. I think there's... I think there's three, but we'll just sing two of those. Get back, and I uh, um, I didn't get completed our next section of the Doctrine of the Bible, so I have just another lesson for us this morning. It'll be a little different than that, so give us a little a little break from that too. But uh, let's pray together, Father. Uh, we just appreciate this uh, wonderful morning that you've given us. Thank you that you've brought us here uh, to this place, Lord. This this church building that you've given us and blessed us with, Lord. We thank you for it. More than that, Lord, I just thank you for the people that you've given us here at Charity Baptist Church, Lord. I thank you for our Sunday school time. Lord, I thank you for what we've been looking at in the doctrine of the Bible. I pray that you continue to lead us in that, uh, uh, being upon the foundation of your word, how you've preserved that for us, Lord, and our day and our time. And uh, Lord, the message is that uh, we'll be looking at uh, future. I just ask that you give wisdom in that and, and planning all those things out, Lord, according to your word. And uh, Lord, this morning as we take a little break from that and we look at your word in a different area, I just ask you bless us greatly through it. Encourage our hearts this morning. Prepare us, Lord, in this time to be ready for our, our Sunday morning worship time. Those uh, families and those that you're working on their heart this morning to be here with us. Uh, we ask that you bring them. Thank you for our uh, sister Shannon that's here with us this morning, Lord, after surgery on Monday. Lord, she's got a smile on her face this morning. I thank you for it. Lord, that you've uh, taken care of her throughout this week. Lord, we st still lift her up to you to pray for healing. Thank you, Lord, that Brittany's here with us this morning, too. We ask a blessing upon her. Lord, a bl blessing upon her husband that stayed at home there in Gillette and was so gracious enough to allow her to come here and be with us this morning and spend time with Kelly. Lord, thank you for that. Uh, we just give you our Sunday school time in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 97. Let's do the first two verses, Caleb.
Thanks, Brother Kurt. Appreciate you leading us in the garden. Uh, I hope uh, with a little bit of what we look at this morning, uh, maybe take a half hour here or so, um, that we can be in the garden with the Lord. Uh, I have just a little message. Uh, the Lord, uh, I thought uh, I was going to actually share this on our Wednesday evening that we had. And uh, the Lord had a little something else for us on Wednesday. Uh, so uh, as I was praying and, and I didn't get things put together for our Doctrine of the Bible, uh, continuing on in our uh, series there that we're looking at, uh, the Lord just laid this upon my heart that, you know, I think this God's given us this for Sunday, given it to us for our Sunday school time. And, uh, you know, when you don't have messages and those things ready and prepared, the Lord always comes through and says, I've got something. You've done some study. I want you to take this and carry it through the people. So we're going to be actually in Daniel chapter 9. So if you take your Bible, if you will, and open to Daniel 9 with me. And we do have some in the pews, if anybody doesn't have one. If you hold your place in uh, Daniel 9 and also go to Psalm 68, verse 18. I've mentioned this a couple times in some preaching lately. The Lord's doing uh, work in my heart, I think, in reference to it. Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard inequity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard inequity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That means He will not hear our prayers as we go to the Lord if there's inequity in there. And I labeled kind of our, just our Sunday school message here uh, this morning is the steps to answered prayer. The steps to answered prayer. So I want to give you a few steps that maybe we can see in, in Daniel 9 where we can begin to pray like the Lord wants us to, to pray, and uh, our prayers can begin to be answered. Of course, like we know, like we read in Psalm 68, 18, that if we regard that inequity in our heart, He will not hear our prayer. So we don't want the inequity. We don't want sin in our heart, because sin prevents us from being able to communicate with our God. So if you follow along in uh, Daniel 9, starting in verse number 1, we'll probably read all the way through, uh, I'm thinking verse number 23, roughly. So quite a bit of reading. I just follow along as I read it. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in desolations of Jerusalem. We know that Daniel understands right there that what had been prophesied before that they were going to spend 70 years in where? Captivity. Captivity. And we know as some of the things that we'd looked at in the doctrine of the Bible that here in Daniel, in the time of the captivity, the Babylonian captivity, God's word was with them, and they had carried it with them there, and, and he didn't leave it there, but he was giving them more of the word of God. And that's where we got Daniel, was in the captivity there. Uh, but I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord that Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah, and while he was reading the book of Jeremiah, he had an understanding of the 70 years. So, as we go on. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love Him and to them that keep His commandments, 
We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us. Confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belongeth mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured out upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing, us, uh, bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our inequities and understand thy truth. Therefore, had the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that thou hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned as at this day. We have sinned, we've done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins and for the inequities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate. For the Lord's sake, O my God, incline thy ear and hear, open thy eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercy. O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hearken and do, defer not for thy own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplications before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding." At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Quite a bit there. Did you all get everything out of that that we needed to? I know Lee did a, a study on this probably a couple years ago now, I'd say maybe. Well, we were up at the uh, um, trapper room. We went through the book of Daniel. Lee that took us through that. There's some great things I think that we can really come out of this with uh, looking at prayer and some steps to answer prayer in our life. If you notice in verse number 13, notice it says, as it, is, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquity and understand thy truth. And if we regard inequity in our heart, he will not hear us. 
Bottom line, you can try and you can try and make all the excuses you want, but if there's inequity in your heart, then there's a barrier between you and God. So what do we need to do? What is what is maybe a uh, a way that we can pray and come to the know the, come to the Lord and our prayers be answered? The first thing I think that we see is actually in verse three. There's a couple things right here. Daniel says, "And I set my face unto the Lord." That's the very first step. Daniel set his face, didn't he, unto the Lord God. How do we pray a lot of times? When we pray together, don't we? Maybe we take a knee. Maybe we sit right where we are. And where do we put our heads? We usually bow our head, don't we? A lot of times. There's a time for bowing our head. There is in praying that way. But I don't think Daniel right here was bowing his head. He wasn't. What does it say? Where did he, where did he put his face? Where? To the, Lord. to the Lord, didn't he? Scott and Shiloh, come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. We're doing Sunday school. Daniel chapter 9 is where we're at. He set his face and the Lord, I want you to envision it. It wasn't, I don't think it was, he was praying bowed like that or with his head down, but he was looking to the heavens, wasn't he? He was looking up to all that God was. He set his face upon the Lord God. He, he looked up and he's looking to his God and he's praising his God, isn't he? But notice what he does once he sets his face on the Lord in, right after that he says, to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes and ashes. He sets his face, doesn't he? To the heavens, to where he knew the God, the one true God, could answer prayer. And he began to seek him by prayer. And supplications. There's a little difference between prayer and supplication. And it talks about fasting and it talks about sackcloth and ashes. I'm not going to go into all the little differences up there, but I want you thinking about prayer. I want you to think about prayer. Putting your face toward the Lord and seeking Him by prayer. Praying to the Lord. Now I think in order, did you notice when we read this with Daniel, how did he feel in his heart? Did he have the sorrow of the world? Did he have the sorrow of the world? Or was he in deep sorrow because of the situation of Israel? He was in deep sorrow. That's godly sorrow that worketh what? Who knows? What is it? Repentance, right? Godly sorrow is what worketh repentance, isn't it? Worldly sorrow does not work repentance. We just feel sorry for something that we did or we got caught, right? But this was true. When he was praying, it was godly sorrow. When it says sackcloth and ashes, he was cut to the heart over the sins that they had com committed, the inequity that was within their heart. You know, they said, when he looked at verse 13 again, it said, Moses and all this evil come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquity and understandeth the truth, right? To turn from the inequity. We began with Psalm 66, verse 18. If we regard inequity in our heart, He will not hear our prayer. So you've got to understand when Daniel began to seek the Lord in prayer, it was a deep repentance that worketh a change in his life. And he wanted that change to be amongst Israel too, didn't he? He wanted them to change. He wanted them to repent and see things as they ought to. So we're looking at the steps to answered prayer. The first thing, setting our face upon the Lord. Second thing is to seek Him by prayer. But notice, I want you to go down to verse number 7 with me. He says, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto Thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. We're looking at Sunday morning. We're going to look at 
after this, in a regular service time, the trespass offering. We've kind of been breaking that apart just a little bit, but he comes to the point right here, confession of the trespass that they had committed against the God of Israel. They had regarded inequity in their heart. So in our steps to prayer, if we want answered prayer, we got to seek the Lord. We've got we to put our face towards Him. Seek Him in prayer. And you've got to get on your knees and I've got to get on my knees and we've got to confess the inequity that is between us and God. See, I don't know what the inequity is that's within each one of your hearts. That's between you and the Lord and you know. But if you want to be effective in our prayer life, we've got to confess that trespass against God in order for him to begin to hear our prayer. And I want you to notice here, when we do it God's way, you know, we can say, does God answer prayer right away? I think oftentimes he does answer right away. He does. Is it gonna, is it gonna, is all the plan of that prayer gonna come out right away? Maybe not, but our Lord is gonna answer that prayer if we pray according to his will, right? So here we have, I want you to go to verse number 22 and 23. So first, set your face upon the Lord. Seek Him by prayer, confession of sin. And I want you to see that there's an answer of prayer right here for Daniel as he pours out his heart. Maybe let me start in verse 20. And while I was speaking, whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel in presenting my supplications before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee. You notice, he says, when you, verse 23, at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, didn't it? The beginning, when he begins to pray to, pray to the God of Israel, and he begins to confess and do all those things, the prayer is answered. The command came forth to Gabriel to go, didn't it? Right away, I want you to see it was right away. His heart was made right with the Lord. Has your prayer been effective? Has your prayers been effective? They can be effective. They can, but we can't regard the inequity in our heart. The prayer was answered immediately. Notice, at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I came to show thee. I came to show thee, O Daniel. You've been praying about this. You want your face to shine upon that mountain again, don't you? Back, it's not the exact words. I better read it so I don't misquote it. Verse number 17, he says, Now therefore, O, God, o our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. He prays that he would renew that again. Make your face shine again, Lord. And now he answers him right away and he comes through the vision and Gabriel gives it to him here. And you know what this vision is? Who knows what the vision is right after this that he talks about with him? Anybody know? It's God. Yes, he talks about the, the 70 weeks of years or whatever we want to call them, right? We know right now, right now, we are still waiting for the 70th week, aren't we? We're still waiting for the 70th week. We know that that takes place when the church is raptured. When we are taken out... God begins the 70th week. The tribulation begins. We know it's going to be how many years? Seven years, don't we? The last week of the prophecy right here that Gabriel gives him. What does he pray about? What has Daniel been praying about right here? That God's face would shine upon Israel again. And we know what the scripture says. That that will not happen like that until the tribulation. And when he's, what he's saying, the face shining upon Israel, that means Israel will begin to do what again before the God of Israel? Do you know? They will repent as a nation and they will begin to be one nation under God again, right? They're not, even though we know Israel in 1948 became a nation. 
They're not a nation under the God of Israel. And that's what Daniel was praying for. We know that it's going to happen. Did God answer Daniel's prayer? He did answer his prayer. He wanted the face, his face to shine upon. Read it again, verse 17. Now therefore, O O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. And he comes, he sends Gabriel, the angel, to him, to give him the vision, to give him an understanding of what he's just prayed. It will happen, Daniel! Your prayer has been answered. I'm giving you the vision. I'm allowing you to be able to see now, right here, but I'm giving you many years forward that you're going to see that it will happen. His prayer that he prayed has been a long time ago, and it's yet to be fully fulfilled. But we know the Word of God is true, and it will what? It will happen for sure. You know, when we're taken out, Lord, I hope it's today. I hope it's today. But when the Lord decides that we're taken out and He begins the tribulation, we know that Israel become a nation again. And when they become a nation again, they're going to come through that place and that time where they begin to repent. And they're going to understand the inequity that Daniel was praying for for them right here. And who believes that they're going to build the temple again in the tribulation? Raise your hand if you believe that. So the Bible says they will, be, they will build the temple again in the tribulation period. There will also be a millennial temple, won't there? There will be a millennial temple. But we see here an answer to the prayer. And I think uh, the part that I really like is kind of what we've been looking at. But let me give you a couple of these steps again to see here. Steps to answered prayer. We need to seek the Lord. We need to put our face upon Him. We need to seek Him by prayer. We need to confess our inequity that's within our heart, don't we? We need to confess that. And as we do, and we enter into that relationship with the Lord and we pray, He will answer your prayer according to His will. It might not be exactly what you want or you desire, but He's going to answer it according to His perfect will. Will and he does that for Daniel right here. I can tell you if Daniel would have entered into this and he had to made his heart right and there would have been inequity in his heart, God would have not answered that prayer. It was answered for him, but yet there's parts of it that were yet to be fulfilled future. See, that can happen for us, can it? It can. Yes, we can pray right now. God can answer those prayers. He can give us understanding of certain things right now, but yet the fulfillment of those things can be further out, can't they? I believe with all my heart that there was somebody, I don't know who it was, but there was somebody praying for my salvation before I ever knew Jesus Christ as my Savior. Their prayer was answered at the time, but yet it was provided later, I think. I I know, I know. One lady, and that's my wife's aunt that's a believer, and I, she's a prayer warrior, and I believe she was one that was praying for the salvation of Shelley's husband, whoever that would be. And the Lord answered prayer, not when she was praying. I mean, not right there. There wasn't the fulfillment of it, but it was later on. And that's what happens with Daniel. That might happen with our prayers, but you can have confidence, can't we? That if we pray and we Take the inequity and confess our sins. He answers your prayer. We can go to the throne. Brother Kurt says it on Wednesday nights a lot of time. As we go in and we pray together to the throne of grace, that we can have confidence that our prayers are not hindered. And our God hears them. And He answers them. But He answers them, doesn't He? According to His will. Now I want to end with this little piece. Not, not long ago, on a Wednesday night, I, we had a little message that, we, that, the Lord, that the Lord gave us. And I titled it, Stephen the Image Bearer. Stephen the Image Bearer. There's a part in that passage in, uh, in uh, Acts chapter 6, and as we go into chapter 7, first deacons appointed and stuff, that the people see Stephen as, as he's talking and stuff, and it's like his face was like what kind of face? Who knows? An angel's face. 
And you know, if we go back and we look at that, what they were actually saying, when, when we see an angel's face, it was actually as if they saw God Himself there through Stephen. Stephen, as we looked at that, Stephen was an image bearer of God, wasn't he? Of the Lord Jesus Christ. When those people looked at Stephen, they saw who? Not really a literal angel, that's not what it means. They saw the face of the Lord Jesus Christ, or representation who who Christ was. And we looked at how we're to be image bearers. And I see the same thing here. As we set our face under the Lord God, as we set our face there, and we pray how He wants us to pray, that His face will shine upon us. His face. Not only will that face shine upon Israel in the sanctuary, in the temple future, and the people like Daniel's praying, but right now in your life, in my life, the, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ can shine on our face. I want to end with this psalm. Psalm 80, verse 19. I say this for us this morning. Psalm 80, verse 19 says, Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Cause thy face to shine. I think exactly what Daniel was praying. Oh God, have your face shine upon your people. Shine upon the temple. Shine upon Jerusalem. Israel, your people here. And I think you and I, you and I as Christians, as we walk with the Lord, as we enter into prayer like He wants us to, setting our face on Him, seeking Him in prayer, confessing our sin, He answers our prayer. But not only that, His face shines upon us. Isn't that what we want to be? Just like Stephen was, an image bearer of the Lord. Jesus Christ. When people look at you, wherever you are, at work, at home, at church, wherever you are, when they see you, who does God want them to see? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. God help us. Just, just what Psalm 80 verse 19, turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Cause thy face to shine. You know, I think if more people saw Jesus Christ in us, what's it going to happen in their life? They're going to get saved, aren't they? They're going to come to know the Lord. They're going to see their darkness. The darkness is going to be revealed. The light's going to go forth in their lives. I thank the Lord God. I thank Him that He's given us a little picture right here in Daniel of something that we can get to a few steps in prayer, confidence in it, to know that He answers our prayer. And His face shines upon us. You see, if you regard inequity in your heart, your prayer is not going to be answered. It's going to be hindered. And the Lord Jesus Christ's face is not shining upon you. Let us, you and I, have that face here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank You, Lord, for Your Word. I pray, Lord, for my life, and I pray for the life, Lord, of those, my brothers and sisters, that are right here this morning. Lord, help us to enter in and, and enter into what Daniel did, Lord, and his love for you, his commitment for you, Lord. And I know that in other passages here in Daniel, it speaks of him praying three times a day, Lord. Lord, help us to be able to be committed prayer warriors, to be committed people, Lord, praying. And Lord, help us to take the steps to set our face upon Thee. And Lord, when we set our face upon Thee, help us to understand, Lord, in our own lives, our sin and our inequity. Help us to be broken over it. And then help, help us take that, Lord, in the brokenness of it, Lord, just like Daniel did here in confessing that inequity and that sin before You. And bringing it up to the throne rooms. And Lord, as we enter there, we see, and I thank you, Lord, that you help and you show us and you give us confidence that your prayers are not hindered, but they're answered in your presence immediately, Lord. And I thank you. 
And Lord, I thank you that our face can represent who you are and help us to be image bearers of you. Lord, just lead us and guide us this morning. I pray for those that you would bring, Lord, this morning here to our morning service as we enter in to worship of you, that, Lord, we would lift high the name of Jesus Christ right here. Your Holy Spirit would lead us. Lord, all the things that are spoken from your word would be true. That, Lord, the hymns that we sing, they would be glorifying to you, Lord. The prayers that we lift up would be honoring in thy sight, Lord. Just be with us, Lord, this morning and lead us. We want the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us this day in the power of your word. In Jesus' name, amen.